And we're moving uh, to the papers this morning with Jide Johnson, who joins us on a beautiful Friday. Jide, it's good to have you join us this morning. I see, and good morning, Kofi. I hope last week both of you were not harassed from doing your duty for not being a Lagosian or a Yoruba person. <laughs> Well, uh, that wasn't the case, but we, we couldn't say it was different for our colleagues who were out. I mean, it was quite threatening when we got the reports. But um, it's still good to know that everyone is up and alive and we're here. And that's one thing that we're grateful for. So, but let's... Let, me just, let me just use the friend they use, go to the court. <laughs> Well, well, I think the, the, yesterday, the, Festus Kiamu had to explain that. What, what, what else should he say? Is that I mean do, should he say uh, we should fight? You know. So anyway, <laughs> you're welcome, Jerry Johnson. Yeah. All right, let, let's take a quick look at the leadership newspaper this morning. It says, in 20 years, Peter will be alters shape of Southeast politics. And that's as Labour Party records first win in Abia governorship elections. PDP uh, slim win in Enugu and takes party closer to extinction. These are the writers you have underneath the bold caption of the leadership. Now, and away from that, uh, there's also another one that says, Sultan declares today, first day of Ramadan. Sultan declares today, first day of Ramadan, uh, the festivity. And banks get more old Naira notes from the Central Bank of Nigeria today. It was yesterday we said, they said it was yesterday. Now we're saying today. So it feels like every day is going to be today. And then you find uh, President-elect Tunubu off to Paris, Saudi Arabia for vacation. Uh, that's quite interesting. I mean, some of us don't have the privilege of going for a destination vacation. But, you know, the president-elect probably might just be enjoying himself. Abu Kari uh, loses bid to stop trial for drug offense. Uh, and then you find global banking turmoil. Nigerian banks need vigilance and proactiveness, according to a report, GAR policy. That's the much we can take this morning on the leadership. All right, and let's go over to the next paper there. Of course, uh, uh, talking about the Punch newspaper uh, with the following headlines. Old notes circulation, CBN, begins monitoring today. Banks set two-week target. Um, there are quite some writers which I'll skip for now. We can look at that as we go on. Ramadan, Tinubu, Atiku, others, or governors pray for peace, unity. Uh, Jida, I want your take on that. Uh, 203 electoral offenders uh, face trial in 20 states. Police, um, I don't know if there's a particular name uh, that is, is part of those uh, people. FG fixes May for airport concession, Nigeria Air. Organ trafficking, Ikwe Maru wife, risk 10-year uh, jail term in UK. Uh, Fire share or Tom tackle PDP over suspension. Tight security as appeal court decides a delicate or yet taller suit uh, today. LD or LP, SDP reject Enugu Ogun governorship poll results. I bet they'll be heading to the courts. Well, we also have uh, the Nation newspaper this morning. PDP hits by post poll crisis, and that's boldly written. Wicked tackles party over suspension of Fauci, Ayim, and Shima. And then Otom X Ekiti, governor, rejects action. It is contemptuous. That's what you find right there. Minister insists Nigeria Air will fly before May 29. <laughs> and then tight security as courts of appeal decide Adelike's fate. Then again, insurance assets increases to 2.3 trillion naira. Yellow cards for owners of Lagos, uh, 349 buildings. Uh, I'm not quite not sure what that is. United Kingdom increases its interest rate to 4.25%. That's a lot, just as us have increased to, you know, 18 Point zero percent, if you like to see, or eighteen percent. CBN begins allocation of more cash to banks. Okay, so we hope that you know the issue of cash crunch and scarcity will be over uh, by the weekend. That's the much we can take on the nation now. All right, let's uh, go straight to Jerry Johnson for his analysis. Jerry, um, I, I one that I would like to start with is on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper. Quite interesting. Uh, Ramadan, Tinubu Atiku, governors pray for peace, unity. 
um, it's amusing to me. When election comes around and they've achieved their result, our political class become religious. Um, I have said that Nigeria is um, a highly religious society, but we are not faithful. It's in Nigeria that you see people will go to church on Monday morning rather than go to work. We flout every known principle, even established by this religion, then we expect miracle to happen for our society. As far uh, as I'm concerned, all of this political class, they perpetrated, they unleashed their terror on Nigerians up during the elections across the board. After unleashing their terror on Nigerians, then they are now seek, trying to seek redemption through Ramadan. I don't even know what type of conscience they do have. And uh, God is just a patient God. And that's why some of us have advocated that we should use African traditional gods in swearing in people into public offices <laughs> and should be the fulcrum of what we use as the base of our faith. Because it seems as the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran are a bit alien to our culture and they are a bit too slow to react to, to, to some of our needs in, in our culture. Because if you use Ailala or Osanobua or Ogun to swear an oath, when you are elected into public office that you are not going to steal money, I can assure you that they will live true to type. But they know what it is. They know we are highly religious people. They know the easiest way for them to assuage our feelings is for them to play the religious card. And, and when they play to their advantage, fantastic. But when others are using it against them, they begin to accuse the other of playing the religious or the ethnic or the ethnic or the ethnic card. Unfortunately, it's not possible for us to take away religion out of our national life. I think there are some certain things actually for us to develop and for us to grow is to take away the issue of religion and to take away the issue of ethnicity and state of origin rather than set it for citizenship. That citizenship is the basis of what determines your existence as Nigerian, not indigenship of local government or not origin of a state and then not about the religion which you practice. The state has no business in religion and that's why even the religious leaders are feeding fat. It's a fact. The religious leaders are feeding fat across the board, from Lagos to Shokoto, Shokoto to Kaduna, Kaduna to Kano, Kano to Enugu, and the rest of it. You see that the religious leaders are part and parcel of the establishment. I'll say it with my chest out that they are part and parcel of our problem in this country because rather than hold this political class accountable, they also become part and parcel of, 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 of reinforcing they are old on reins of power. So as well as I'm concerned, I, I take it with a pinch of salt when someone that is not faithful is trying to be religious. He's just playing to the galleries and ostrich, burying his head in the sound and all of his body are, 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 are out there. How religious, how faithful are these people? Hmm. Very interesting. Well, um, Jida Johnson, let's quickly look at the punch now. And it talks about the availability of the Naira as the uh, Apex Bank will be chunking in the notes to the uh, commercial banks. But are you not worried that up until this moment, despite the fact that there's been uh, a comment from the Central Bank of Nigeria to the ruling of the Supreme Court, we we'll still have the notes not available, whether the old or the new note also still in scarcity? Uh, we have said it over time, Messi, that there are institutions of the state in Nigeria that are bigger than the core institution established by the constitution. There are three major organs of government, the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive. Now, when you have infractions, lack of respect for the third organ of government, which is meant to interpret the law and maintain order and sanity in the society by, one, by a subset, a subset of one of the organs, a subset of the, of the executive, then you know there is a serious problem. NNPC operates as a body on its own. Um, um, INEC operates as a body on its own. Um, um, Central Bank to operate as a body on its own. So they operate as an autonomous body within the Nigerian space. So they, they are above the law. They cannot be put to question. Because you begin to wonder what is the Attorney General doing with respect to ensuring that there is compliance with the judgment of the Supreme Court 
with respect to the Naira design, design policy. In democracy, it's government for the people, by the people and for the people. We said the judiciary is the last stop of the common man. And unfortunately, they are the ones that set up this agenda and this public view of the judiciary. Because one, the, inst the institution of the state don't have respect for the judiciary. As a result of that, people lose confidence in the judiciary. So when people begin to doubt the credibility of the judiciary, they should not be blaming the political class. I watch a minister. I don't even know what type of nation we practice. Where a minister will be appearing and be speaking on daily basis on the part of a political party, as if we are still running as the she spokesperson. The, such such thing will not happen in a civilized climate. If he wants to be a spokesperson, he will not be the minister of the junior minister for labor and productivity. He would rather resign and face his job as a minister of labor and productivity and be the official spokesperson. He's wearing double garment. He's a minister of the federal republic and he's taking a partisan view. In a normal climb, the judiciary will have dealt with that particular issue, or the attorney general will have will have, will have written a letter to the president to that effect that this cannot happen. But hey, what do we have? Say what? Say what? Anything can happen. That's the system which you have in Nigeria. So when people doubt the judiciary, don't blame the people. When the political class that have that have issues with the electoral process raise issue concerning the credibility of the judiciary. These are the things that give clue to it because there is a decision by the apex court to the apex bank. This is the way you should go about this. Yet the apex bank is not complete. You know, I queued for almost two hours to collect just 10,000 on the ATM on, on Wednesday when I got to, to, to Enugu. Uh, do, I, do I even pay new notes? Last week, I, 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 last week when I went to the bank, I was paid three thousand from my money three thousand. I filled <laughs> the withdrawal slip and I was paid what I'm entitled to is three thousand. It was not even last week, it was Monday. This Monday, three thousand from my money, three thousand, and I was even giving old note. My money that I had rights to. I, I don't know if we have the likes of Nigerians should seek damages from CBN. Nigerians should seek based on the Supreme Court just. Sometimes I, I, I have a regret that I didn't study law because there are some class action that you could take on behalf of the citizen and sue the government and then you get judgment for it. We should sue the government, both the federal government and the, and, and the central bank governor and the central bank governor as a person for damages, for injustice against the Nigerian people. You know how many people that have lost, that have lost their lives, that have lost their lives as a result of not having access to cash? Not that because some people will not collect, will not collect transfer, and some that have tried to make transfer. What what has been our experiences with making transfer? Some have made transfer, and the transfer is you are not crediting those you want to credit. They can't they can't see they can't even see the the, the credit. The money has left your account is hanging somewhere between the intermediaries between your bank and and the person you want to credit. So it's it's unfortunate. It's it's very very. Very, very unfortunate. And they do it with the voter fees. They do it as if there's nothing you can do. Every one of them thinks that they are above the law. They are untouchable. Look at their disposition. The disposition of people occupying offices. The disposition of the MD of NNPC, for example. The disposition of the INEC chairman. The disposition of central bank governor. And you look at the disposition of the ministers of federal, of federal republic or, 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 or heads of security agencies. Rather than be serving the people, they have taught us to be their servers. And I said it that we are not practicing democracy. What we are practicing is feudalism. One, the, the, the governors have control over who have access to the land. They, they can decide that today you are no longer wanted on this land. Move your premises off this land. So you have the, the, the rulership of the, of, of, of the, of, of the lords of the, and on, on, on the serfs. So the few that lots have control over state resources. They have control over the security. They have control over everything. So they determine the day you come out. They determine the days you don't go out. They determine whether you can own property or you cannot own property. They determine whether you can vote or you cannot vote. So they determine your citizenship. Right. So what we have is feudalism and not democracy. It's, uh, it's uh, quite a fortunate uh, stark picture you've 
you've uh, you've painted and Jerry Johnson even though we've been uh, you know having a, a laugh at the your, your plight but the fact is it's actually a, a sad commentary uh, because you know that people have even had to collapse die give birth at ATM points and all that and it, it's it's really a sad one um 203 electoral offenders face trial in 20 states police now, if I, if I read that, I think like Messi was chuckling at one story. It's making me chuckle. But I wonder if there's a, a name of one uh, dramatist personnel or the dramatist personnel in, in Lagos State uh, in what we saw happen here, play out here on the 18th of March. But are you, are you uh, uh, confident that uh, this police probe will really go after those who really matter? You see, someone cannot have their front tree to commit robbery or to commit election infractions, except that they are arrested. And then we have seen cases of, I, I, I want to see whether they will prosecute INEC officials who in one way or the other compromise the integrity of their offices. Because we have had cases of resort being suspended. We have had cases of resort sheet being doctored, being manipulated. We have had cases of such such and then we have had cases of even um pvc recovered thousands of PC, pvc recovered buried not a single person has been found complicit in INEC or prosecuted i you see when we want to clean the electoral system it has to start with the body that is given the responsibility if the body that is given responsibility and is given much resources is not living to expectation i believe that the audit should start from there. I think I believe that the prosecution should start should start from there. I've said it over and over time again. Anyone that causes an infraction in democratic process is committing treason, treason and felony offense because it's trying to truncate the the means, the legitimate means through which you can acquire power power in a democratic democracy. Democratic All of these people that you see that have been arrested, you won't see any of the political class who are their sponsor. Who are those that have sent them out? If they are interrogated, I think, you see, until you make example of people that are beneficiary of a corrupt political system, this corruption will continue. We thought that, oh, violence, the violence we witnessed in 2023 election is incomparable to the violence we witnessed in 2019. We thought to a large extent that violence, violence, um, surrounding our election will be reduced but unfortunately unfortunately we saw the desperation on the part of the political class and we see the 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 the, the, the com with we see complicit behavior on the part of those that were even given responsibility to ensure that the election is credible to ensure that the election is free the election is fair and every nigerian is given the opportunity to decide who governs them so when you see police have arrested who are what what are the identity of those that are, they have arrested? Who are they? Who are their sponsors? This, all this we need to know. When are they right. taking them to court? Because if you do your investigation thoroughly, you get to the root of the matter. Mm, but there's you one get of, to the root we of have matter. to go, Jiri. Thank you so much. One of them includes a, uh, a gentleman who was being beaten, I'm sure, uh, that story in Lagos. He was being beaten by some persons and he ran into the Obas Palace to seek protection. And then uh, the thugs from the thugs, and they was handed over to the police who arrested him. Um, anyway, Eugenia, thank you very much for your time. I uh, do enjoy your, your stay in Enugu, and like I said, do find time to eat some original Enugu Okwa. It'll do you good, um, you know, and let's just enjoy yourself. Uh, we hope to have you next Thank week. you very much. Merci. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Kofi. Thank you. Have a wonderful all right. I don't know if the police have also seized his network. Yeah. Well, the uh, network yeah. is uh, not favorable for GD at this point in time, but we hope to connect with him uh, next week. That's the size of it for Off the Press. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at new statistics and, you know, uh, the fact that uh, breast cancer can also be a thing with this uh, recent report. We'll be speaking with a professional. Please stay with us. Good morning.